Hey there, EV people. What did I tell you? It's a big week for EV news, and today was a big day because Rivian unveiled the R2 SUV. And one more thing at the end, just a, just one more little thing. It's a big, big week for EVs. Now, before we get started, just remember, you got to like and subscribe right down there. Just hit that little subscribe button so you can get all of my EV musings, because why would you not want to in any event? It is Thursday, March 7th, big day on the EV calendar, 2024. <laughs> Let's get to it. Boom! Happy Thursday, everybody, and what a day it is with the brand new Rivian R2 SUV and also the R3 and the R3X, which looks ridiculously cool, doesn't it? Now, I wasn't really quite sure what to expect in the presentation today. Uh, obviously, we I think everybody knew there were some leaks and we pretty much could pretty much come to the conclusion that they were going to be debuting sort of a smaller SUV today. But man, they actually blew me away. I reserved one. I, I, I plunked down the hundred bucks to reserve one because I just I fell in love with the thing almost as soon as he drove it out um, and they brought it out onto the stage. It looks awesome which rivian's design has always been good there's you know the, the r1t and the r1s are really good looking vehicles and this is just a sort of like a shrunken down version of the r1s pretty much which i think this is kind of the sweet spot for rivian i think it's going to be the sweet spot for rivian i mean the r1s is really expensive even the r1t is is expensive but this starting at forty five thousand dollars now granted the the top trims are probably going to be closer to 70 but even still for what you're getting it's still a very premium vehicle um it's got a lot of storage it's really cool um 300 300 plus miles of range in all trims according to uh rj uh today and that's pretty impressive especially when you consider that the top trim is going to have three motors it's a tri-motor variant that's going to go zero to 60 and he said under three seconds that's pretty cool which really gets my juices flowing when i hear that i'm like yeah baby that's what i want um i love that so you know i think everything about this thing is so cool i mean they got a lot right and he said you know rj said during the presentation that they learned a lot from the r1s and the r1t and i think they did you know putting in two <laughs> glove boxes uh instead of none um little things like that but i you know when you see the interior it still looks really premium and really cool um it, it's i think rivian has kind of always been a little bit a step above tesla as far as the interior design goes they've kind of always felt like i think they They've always felt like they needed to go that little bit extra mile to sort of differentiate and they certainly do i mean you can't argue with the design of it 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 really is it's a good looking it's a good looking suv and i think it's the right size it's going to be the right price like this is the car this will it be their model why i don't know yet well i mean time will tell it's still going to be two years before they start delivering these things pretty much um but i think it could be you know if they can keep that price uh, and they can keep the the, um, the tax incentives on it. I mean, we'll see. I mean, who knows where we'll be two years from now um, as far as what the tax incentives are and, and, and what they'll apply to. It seems to change all the time. But right now, I mean, this just looks like a really compelling purchase. And the fact that, you know, it has the rear glass that goes down, all the windows open, it kind of reminded me, it was almost like they were like, you know, giving the finger to Fisker in that way. Like to me, like now, you know, Fisker is, um, yeah, it's a good looking car, the the, the Fisker Ocean. It, it's a good looking vehicle, but I mean, there's problems and Rivian doesn't have those problems. I mean, Rivian has pretty much worked through most of their sort of tech quibbles. I mean, I'm sure there's still a few, but for the most part, I think Rivian's reputation has gone way up. Their build quality is fantastic. Um, so I think, you know, this could be sort of the death knell for Fisker, at least the Fisker Ocean, because really, if given the choice, why would you buy a Fisker Ocean from a company that may or may not be around in six months or the Rivian R2, which you can debate the design, but I think the Rivian looks better. I think it, it's got more power. 
and it's I think built by uh, it's not built by a better company I, I don't think you can really top Magna Steyr in Austria I don't think it's the build quality it's just the company itself is just more stable I don't think Rivian's going anywhere despite you know the stock market going up and down their stock price going up and down I don't think Rivian's leaving us anytime soon and I think the fact that they debuted not only the R2, but the R3 shows that they're going to grow that product line. Now, they didn't really give a date or even a price for the R3, but one would have to assume that it won't be too long after the R2 uh, hits the road and that the pricing will probably be maybe a little less because it is a little smaller. Um, but... I'm not sure I love the look of the R3 as much. I think it does look cool. And the R3X actually looks really cool. It's just that it looks like an R2 kind of with the back cut off, you know? And so I'm not sure, but it actually gives off uh, like sort of like an AMC Eagle vibe, um, which I think is kind of actually cool because um, those were kind of one of the first sort of crossover SUVs back like in the late 70s, early 80s and they've become somewhat iconic over over time like people still like love the, those things they're they're you'll find people that just obsessed over those things and it kind of gives you a little bit of that vibe so it's kind of like it's one of those things like to me i've always thought of the the eagle and i think now the the um the r3 is almost um it's so kind of ugly it's good looking if that makes sense like it's just quirky and weird but still you kind of like are drawn to it like it's like i look at it i'm like man eh, i don't know if i really like it but then i look at it some more and i think maybe i do like it i don't know it it's kind of cool so i don't know all, all i can say is um i'm super excited for this r2 like i said i, I already put a deposit down i mean it's 100 bucks so whatever i put a deposit down um and now i'll just wait and i feel like you know they're saying they're gonna have this thing ready to go and to start making deliveries in early 2026. Um, I kind of feel like, I, I, I think they'll probably meet that date. I mean, I don't know if it'll be maybe a couple months later, hopefully not, but I'm sure that they'll be able to deliver this thing in 2026. I wish it wasn't that long. I wish they were gonna deliver this thing in the beginning of 2025, but you know, we had to wait four years for the Cybertruck, but the R2 looks like the one. I'm super excited about it. Can't wait to uh, to see them on the road. Can't wait to get behind the wheel of one. Can't wait to get one for myself. And yeah, it's a big day in the world of EVs. And what a week because we have not only today the R2 and this the R3, which we didn't expect, but we also earlier this week got the uh, Charger Daytona EV, which looks badass. I mean, it's like now I'm sitting here going, man, I wish I had unlimited money so I could get one of each, but I don't. And I have to pick and choose. So right now I would choose the R2, but um, maybe an R1T in between. I don't know. We'll see. But in any event, no matter what you get, what you like, what's coming, EBs are awesome, and it's okay to be awesome. See you guys next time. Like and subscribe down there. <laughs>